this uh, picture. Obviously, uh, this is us, although um, uh, Natasha, who's a colleague of mine, said she wouldn't have been able to recognize me. That's actually me. And a little note on why we chose, uh, you know, prom night as a theme. Well, because, you know, of course, prom night, especially if you come from, you know, an Anglo-Saxon culture, and of course, and especially in the U.S., is um, a special night at the end of, you know, your high school years. Um, which is lived with great anticipation, first of all, because it's that special night, you have to find the right date, the right outfit. Um, it um, bears a lot of hopes with it, and it carries, you know, that kind of, uh, of course, preparation that goes behind events, big events in your life. So suits, dates, hairstyle, and everything. And of course, you want to be, you want to have a Versace tie. But... Yes, I, I have some extra questions about the hairstyle, but we, we can we can save those for the Q and A session at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, as Giovanni said, there's a lot of preparation that goes into the event, and the parallel to teaching is there's a lot of preparation that goes into our lessons. Uh, but what happens when it rains? So what happens when things don't go exactly as we had visualized? Well, we are trying to argue today that this is when it starts getting interesting because when we react to what we see and what we're experiencing and, and what happens out of our control then this is when we have a genuine interaction between the students and the teacher so you can expect the rain <laughs> yeah so these are some things that we've heard uh, from <laughs> these are these are all true uh, quotes from CELTA trainees, particularly because we both train on the uh, on the CELTA course at IH Rome. Um, so, Giovanni, shall we perform these? Yes. So the first one is the audio wouldn't play. So, oh, one student didn't open the handout I sent by email. So, well, students are getting bored with the same partner in the breakout room. So, students were sitting down for over two hours. So. A student lost their connection, so... The breakout room was plotting against me, so... The lesson didn't go as well as I'd wanted. <laughs> so you will have noticed all of those uh, things were possible problems, but all of those things were external issues, and our job as teacher is to react. So, of course, we go into the lesson with a plan, but as, as Adrian once taught me, Adrian Underhill, who many of you will have seen this morning, um, you should treat your plan as a non-stick plan and be ready to improvise from the plan as the situation requires. So here are a few, of course, key concepts. You know, James and I were mentioning as we were planning this session that we both really, really like to have an overarching theme in our um, presentations. And uh, today the theme is really, you know, captured really, really well by that quote. Um, and I think the key phrase there is the verb phrase had chosen. I think it is really, really important that you embrace some kind of event like a storm on prom night that comes your way as if you'd chosen it that way so that you can react to it with an informed and aware decision because with awareness comes more confidence and adaptability which is what James is going to talk about with that Venn diagram over there. So with awareness comes more confidence and adaptability. <laughs> it's worth saying that again, because it is, it is really, really important. Um, but it starts with awareness, awareness of what's going on in the classroom, awareness of your student's mood, your student's problems, um, awareness of yourself and how you're reacting to these issues as best you can. And, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that super skill of cognitive flexibility in order to react to these issues in online teaching. Um, the little image there in, in green is, is referring to growth mindset. It's one of the things that I really believe in as a, as a key concept of, of teaching. So in, in this case, um, it's about accepting errors, accepting um, imperfections as part of lessons. Uh, we're not looking for perfection. It's not a performance. It's not a lecture. It's a natural conversation, a uh, natural interaction with the people that you're with. 
So accepting that things will go wrong, that things are outside of your control is a really, really important first step before we can do any of the things that we're about to discuss in terms of details. Yeah. And if you were here this morning during Adrian's talk, I mean, you could uh, you know, relate this to the concept of up upgrading. This idea of living the present really is, uh, you know, resonates with the concept of, of upgrading there. So we're going to very, very quickly go through a few areas, of course, a few uh, things that can happen um, during prom night. And we've divided them uh, into three main areas, didactic, personal, and technical issues. Uh, but just, you know, a, a disclaimer, first of all, we did not intend to give you an exhaustive list of things that can go wrong and how to react to them. It would have been impossible. Um, it's um, what these examples that we're giving you are just, um, you know, examples of how, you know, sometimes this, the solutions or adaptability uh, or an adapted version of what we want to do is right there in front of us and we cannot see it. And these all come from real examples and observations, not just in salsa courses, but of teachers in our school. So we're going to start with technical issues. So the audio wouldn't play. Well, this is not um, a problem which is exclusive to online teaching. This also happens in physical classrooms. Um, but it's not a reason that you should stress or worry because there are many solutions available. Um, plan B and Plan C involve other uh, devices, so mobile phones, maybe you've got a tablet that you can download it on, but maybe you're just having one of those days and none of your um, devices work, maybe the other two things are out of out of battery, you know, things happen and it just seems like there are no options. Well, plan D, the, you can always perform the audio using the audio script. Um, and if you fully invest in this, then students will really enjoy it, I think, and remember it a lot better because uh, they know that you have a plan, um, but they also, I think, appreciate it when you are able to adapt and and stay calm under under pressure of things not going uh, as you wanted. So there's many other options available there. My favorite. Oh God, yeah. So this happened this morning on CELTA. Um, <laughs> there's background noise. For example, uh, a bit of construction work outside the window, um, and the, and you know the teacher might say, well, you know. I, it was really off-putting. There was background noise for 25 minutes. It was, it just wouldn't stop. And I think, well, okay, but what can you as the teacher do about it? And it's very, very simple. We're not going to spend too much time on it. Ask the student politely first to, if, if they would mind muting, because, you know, the sound's off-putting, but maybe they don't even realize. Often they're not aware that their sound is, is affecting others. Or if, they're, if you can't reach them, there's, there's one student uh, that we have on CELTA at the moment who, uh, who answers her phone sometimes during TP, right? So she'll pick up her phone, pronto? And she'll say, sorry, I just have a work call. Okay, okay fine. <laughs> pronto? And then she's gone, you know, and she's still talking, but we can't, we can't um, communicate with her. So at this point, just mute, mute this student because when they come back, they can participate again, but use the mute button. It's, it's, it's one of these superpowers that we don't have in real life. Yes. Um, so this comes, uh, uh, of course, a very, very common uh, problem. One of the students had connection problems. So, so that case where you have students that often have connection problems all the time. So this case study comes from, uh, and again, an experience I had on a CELTA course with a teaching practice student. So somebody who was a student on the course, Chiara lives in a small town uh, by Mount Etna, which as you surely know, is a volcano and therefore Wi-Fi connection tends to be a bit iffy in that area. So. Uh, for that reason, Chiara's connection was an ongoing problem throughout the course. It was coming and going. And, you know, of course, trainees on the course of the student teachers were, would complain during feedback about this. Uh, but Chiara was a very motivated and committed student. So one day, in fact, one of the trainees, you know, we started the lesson and Chiara <clears throat> lost her connection after probably like two minutes into the lesson. So the 
the student teacher actually stopped when she came back and she said, Kiara, you know what we're going to do today? I'm just now going to stop for five minutes and spend these five minutes and we're going to tell you more or less what our plan is from today. And when, when, and when Melissa did this, she didn't just give her a plan as in like, you know, the typical thing that you would do on the whiteboard. So we're going to do some reading. We're going to do, you know, vocab. She just actually told her, say, so from 9.15 till 9.55, we will have read this and reflected on these questions. So make sure you have these tasks ready with you. Then she said, okay, in the second slot, okay, we'll be doing some grammar. And then the third slot, we'll be doing some writing. And they gave her the pages. And that really changed the, the game completely. <clears throat> because when Kiara lost her correction, her connection, during those 15 minutes, she was doing something. She was reading or she was doing the grammar tasks. So when she came back, you know, she was more or less where the others were or even ahead. <laughs> and the second problem is the file sending problem, which sometimes we have on, <clears throat> of course, Zoom. Um, well, apart from the very obvious um, solution to share your screen, which uh, trust me is not that obvious when you observe a lot, a lot of hours of teaching, um, and, but the second one, which is possibly even more useful, is uh, Google Docs, which we just used now. Obviously, if you know, a task uh, you know, can't be shared by email or hasn't been shared uh, you know, before the lesson, uh, or you, know, you can't share your screen, you know, just put it in a Google Doc and share the file. So we're now going to look at some didactic issues. Yes, so the categorization is quite arbitrary. You, you might have noticed already because, of course, um, technical issues are personal issues, are didactic issues. They all sort of run into each other. Um, <clears throat> so do aware that do be aware that you you can't you can't put a clean divide between each of the uh, each of the problems. Um, and the solutions also um, help in more than one area. So. Didactic, a particular didactic problem that we wanted to um, address beyond the obvious um, things that are often discussed is the issue of movement, um, because as we all as we all know intuitively, when when the students are sitting down for too long, there seems to be a a lack of concentration. They 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 don't seem to be as engaged as as they often are when they're moving around. So this is actually based on uh, good research. Uh, so I'll give you uh, 20 seconds or so to have a read through this. So this is a really important point that we want students to be moving around and I'm, I'm talking about students, young learners, um, also adults to be moving around during the lesson, not just as a break from learning, but to enhance learning. Um, this is really, really important. And there are things that we can do when we're online to encourage students to move around. Slide please, Maestro. Yep. Uh, not sure what's happening, but raining on prom night right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, I thought we were going to have a real problem that we'd have to fix. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> okay, so what can we get students to do when the camera is still on, so on screen? So this is a list of seven or eight things that I, that I prepared for another presentation. I'll, I'll share links with you at the end. And I've just chosen my top three. So get students to go and find something beginning with. So find something beginning with K, and they run off to the kitchen and bring back a knife. It's, it's a joke. Don't do that with young learners, but any, um, you know, any objects that you think they need to leave the screen, even just for 10 seconds and then come back and show what they found. Uh, charades, very, very simple. You actually get students to stand up. You know, they're not stuck to their seats. Uh, they can stand up and move around um, to show. Um, maybe you want to do it as a, an exercise uh, with vocabulary, maybe grammar, whatever, whatever you're working on, functions, whatever you're working on in that lesson. And then Simon says, my younger learners love Simon says, very, very simple, absolutely zero preparation preparation from me, um, but tons of vocabulary and they have tons of fun doing it. 
And then what can students do off camera? So off camera, I'm talking about getting the students to actually turn their camera off like this and sending them away to do tasks. For example, preparing tasks away from the camera. Uh, and, and I do make a point of saying, look, I think it's a really good idea to go into a different room, maybe go onto your balcony, go and have a walk around the block around your neighborhood if you think it will help and come back here in five minutes with your ideas. So that could be for any written task. Um, most students have the materials also on their phone, so they don't need to be attached to the computer screen. Um, and this is also to take a step back and look at this with a wider lens. Um, excuse the pun, but, but this is also about giving students a lot more trust because when they're away from the screen, I can't check up on them, but I'm trusting them to do the work. And I think when you, um, when you give a lot of trust, then students, from my experience, any students, even if they're the naughty students, especially the naughty students, will respond actually positively and say, well, actually, you've given me this responsibility and I will, um, and I will, 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 will take that and, and use it um in 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 the best in the best way possible so yeah i think this works really really well and when students come back there is a different energy because they've had a bit of time away from this small square which we all will benefit from uh, and then this second one is actually an an activity from um my dos who's here tanya and this i often use this as a lead-in so i send students away um, I tell them to go outside, even if it's just to stick their head out the window and close their eyes, hear what they can hear, smell what they can smell, open their eyes and, and try and see everything that they can see. And then they come back after two or three minutes and share their ideas. And there are many different, um, different activities that we can do off that, uh, you know, imagining what could happen if, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, there's many things that we can do away from the screen as well. And, and uh, it just just to add to that, uh, that we were just also mentioning when we were preparing this, this is something that's we've been doing online more, the sending them away for preparation time. And it's really something that you, you we both like to bring back into the physical classroom mm -hmm. possible because it's, you know, taught us a lesson, this idea of, you know, giving learners that trust to go away to prepare and come back to the learning experience. Um, this, um, of course, second point that we're gonna mention real quick, uh, again, is a few more strategies to bring the energy levels up a little bit through dynamic collaboration, uh, which um, of course, you know, uh, John Travolta was great at, obviously, in helping Olivia Newton-John uh, with her dance moves. Uh, so uh, there are, you know, two, two apps in particular that we found, you know, that we wanted to mention. Uh, one we've used today, uh, the Padlet, uh, but uh, Jamboard, if you haven't used it, I mean, um, please, you know, start experimenting with it because it, it allows for a lot of, you know, um, energy changes, you know, through, through the lesson because, you know, it's very, very flexible and user-friendly. There are sticky notes um, that you can mix and match uh, and color code. Uh, there are, you know, um, you can upload pictures. So for example, it really allows for, uh, you know, a non-verbal response to a lot of tasks. So for example, for feedback uh, during CELTA courses or for activities where you want the students to respond uh, to, you know, for example, listenings without having to write, uh, they can upload pictures from the web very, very quickly. And it's something that brings the energy level up really easily. Um, and uh, the uh, Jamboard has a huge advantage that you can monitor what the students are doing holistically. So you can see uh, what each room or group is doing. Uh, at the same time. So it kind of overcomes that issue that we have online where monitoring isn't as holistic as it would be in a physical classroom. So a very, very flexible tool. You can have text and you can write and can, you can give feedback on text and students can give feedback to each other in live. So very flexible. And the Padlet, obviously we've used it today. Um, I think I'm in love with the Padlet. Obviously, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very, very flexible platform. This is just an example of what you can do with pictures. 
but you can very, very easily respond to um, any kind of, kind of social media post through, for example, um, um, voice messaging because you can record and reply with a voice message on the Padlet. And that's something, again, that you get the, you can get the students to do in a different room. So if they're on Zoom with you, you can get them to leave, you know, go into the kitchen, record a message, respond to each other for five minutes, and then come back to, to the computer. So again, getting them away from the laptop. And we're going to move to the last area, which is personal. Yes. Personal. So again, the, the, the categorization is, um, is, is quite mixed. Um, personal, we're referring to um, particularly body language. Um, and Giovanni's ideas afterwards will, will focus more on lowering the effective filter, which is a huge advantage when we're working online if we use the tools that are available. So um, the first one, um, the idea that we can't fully communicate with no body language. So we, we were discussing this and we said, well, actually it's important to stress that sometimes there aren't perfect solutions. And sometimes the most important thing is to recognize that this shows us an important lesson. And the lesson is that we are still human. We, we, we can't fully recreate uh, full body communication <laughs> online. Uh, thank goodness, actually, because then why would we even meet anybody face to face uh, again when we have the opportunity? So I think that's a really important point to to stress that this is actually a positive thing, that there are limitations is a positive thing um, because it shows that we are still human after all. But <laughs> we also have a lot of things that we can do online. Um, you can only see this much of me. Not that you need to see my knees in order to communicate with me, but um, we are limited with the amount of body language that we can share. So, of course, use your facial expression and use your voice very, very well. Um, your, your, your tone, um, how you address students, your voice becomes even more important. Also your hands. I think it's important to, to show your hands every now and then, just so students know that you aren't sort of uh, scrolling through Facebook. <laughs> with your hands but it, this is all we have right so it's important to use what we have to to the best possible way when we're communicating uh, with students yes and um <laughs> like james said i'm going to give you a couple of examples of how creativity and performance can actually happen in online possibly with less with reduced effective filter filter levels uh, than in the in the physical classroom so um, this is an activity that first, I don't know, I just first tried out uh, as a game. Of course, it's an old game. But of course, when I, when I uh, suggested uh, that, you know, the student teachers I had on CELTA, uh, that they try it out, um, first they were really, really wary and, and worried, let's say, of, of possible uh, problems that they might have with students. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it actually works really well because um, the idea is very simple, of course. You uh, choose a song, like a very popular track. Uh, you know, you can choose Water Feeling um, uh, from, you know, Flash Dance. And you, uh, of course, get the students to rewrite the lyrics with a theme. So on that occasion, of course, on that occasion, the theme was the lockdown because, you know, lockdown had just started in Italy. And so, of course, the students chose, you know, that section of the song and they kind of rewrote it. And here's an example, of course, what could happen, okay? Um, are you going to sing uh, it? Obviously, yeah, huh? Are, are you not going to sing it? <laughs> My I might sing the song later on. I might say, sing our theme song. Um, <clears throat> but uh, as you can see, of course, what, you, what normally happens is that we are, when we're in the physical classroom, uh, we, uh, we might, you know, feel more self-conscious. And if we have to perform right away, first of all, as normal, and then our, that preparation time uh, that we normally give our students before these tasks in the classroom, is uh, in front of everybody else, really, because we're in the same room. 
The difference is that, of course, in Zoom, where we did this, you know, the students were in breakout rooms on their own, so they were practicing, you know, uh, singing, <clears throat> you know, what an evening, da, da, da. okay, they could do that on their own. And that, of course, meant that they were ready when they came back and felt more confident and sang it together. Mm -hmm. um, and the same goes for role plays. Now I'm gonna unabashedly plug in role plays from this book <laughs> because I believe in the principle, um, you know, the overall principle behind the book. And, um, and uh, of course I'm also, a, I happen to be a co-author of the book. So, <laughs> um, and uh, just to give you an example of a role play that um, can be more difficult in the physical classroom. So again, a case where the storm of online teaching actually works to our benefit. Um, and I'll give you an example of a role play. So I'll give you 15 seconds to look at this. 20 seconds, maybe. Okay, so obviously you can see that when you give, you know, a typical activity in the classroom, when, you know, you give the Fabio's preparation time and you give, you know, the Allison's preparation time and that they're, you know, uh, maybe thinking about what they're going to say and then you put them in pairs and they do the role play. Obviously, again, you know, online, this was facilitated by the fact that, for example, especially I must say the people that were uh, playing the role, uh, Allison's role, uh, <clears throat> that of course maybe had to get their uh, more, uh, let's say, um, um, you know, I'm trying to look for a non, uh, for a PC word, politically <laughs> correct. They're uh, more- uh, um, Combative? Combative, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> attitude, <laughs> um, of course, attitudes out. They, uh, uh, of course, they needed pre that preparation time and they, and the, it, it worked out really well when they came back they paired up because I think, you know, they, they were given that space. And again, this is a lesson that I'd like to bring back into the physical classroom whenever possible, send students into a different room, a different space on their own to prepare for this kind of activity. So, so after the storm. what happens next? Um, we don't know when, but there will be a day where we can choose to teach online or uh, in the physical classroom <clears throat> safely in both cases, um, obviously depending where you are in the world. And what happens then? Well, we think it's really important to stress that there is so much that we have learned this year and it would be a real shame to throw it all away and, and go back to what we were comfortable with before because there are so many things that we can integrate into our into our teaching to improve it. And, and we probably wouldn't have got that impetus without um, the storm of the coronavirus and, and being forced onto online teaching. But there are so many things to take forward from here. Yeah. And mainly, uh, of course, these three ideas that have to do with, you know, flexibility, which again, I think the idea of being able to react to the present in a, flex in a flexible way and again, I'd, I'd like to stress this out again. Sometimes it's a very, very simple solution, like playing the audio file from a, a different device. And um, it, it is really, or, or, or file sharing, you know, it is uh, often right there. Um, collaboration, uh, and which of course has proven to be really, really essential I mean, throughout the pandemic and integration of new ideas, I think that, that, you know, going back to the beginning real quick, of course, the idea of uh, dropping this myth, debunking the myth that we have of prom night having to be perfect uh, really helps you live the present. So I think mm -hmm. you know, this a kind of anxiety that we have in, for lessons to uh, go, always go according to plan. Um, it, the, soon as we, and the sooner we get rid of it, the better, the more reactive we are, the more flexible we become. So I think we have a few minutes. We also have our song. Do, do we have some time for questions? Right there. Yes. Yes. Questions, please. Yes.
Yeah. Yeah. So, by the way, before we start questions, I, I put the webinar slides and, and the write up, so the, the brief points of what we've been discussing um, on, on, a, on a blog post, and, and it will be live in about 30 seconds. <laughs> so, if, if you want to go over anything that we've that we've discussed, then, then it's all there. But yeah, we'll be happy to answer any, any questions. Yeah, can I stop, just stop sharing the screen? Uh, cause I can't read the chat oh. and there were a few. Oops, sorry. Um, I think Chris, Chris has lifted his hand virtually. Hi, I'm Chris. following the, the whole zoom etiquette thing, but <laughs> <laughs> I often don't notice it myself when I'm teaching. I'm looking at the chat thinking questions, questions. Um, yeah, um, I wanted to come back to the point that you made about the absence of body language in Zoom lessons and whether you think that because body language is still important and back channel communication is very important. If we lose the ability to do those things in our Zoom lessons, do you think that teachers should spend a little bit of time in their lessons explicitly teaching those things? Because they can have quite a big cultural impact. Sure. That's, that's a good a good question. Um, personally, I, I haven't spent any time teaching them as in sort of including them in a lesson plan. I think it, it's very important to set an example of how you want students to, to communicate using their body language. And, and that doesn't require any of your lesson time. But I, I'm, I'm certainly not against an explicit lesson on, on body language and, and having a more open discussion about, you know, what this means for how we communicate with body language. That, that would be a really good idea, actually. 